here is a collection of videos related to aortic dissection. Aortic dissection mechanisms and classification. Mechanisms of aortic dissection 1. Indimel tear. 2. Medial hemorrhage due to rupture of vaso vasorum extending into the lumen. Location of indimel tear in aortic dissection 1. Near the aortic valve. 2. Region of ligamentum arteriosum. Stanford classification of aortic dissection depending only on the location of the dissection not on the location of the indimel tear a ascending aorta is involved b ascending aorta is not involved debakey classification of aortic dissection 2 ascending aorta 1 originates in ascending aorta and extends at least till arch 3 descending aorta diagrammatic representation of debakey classification of aortic dissection into types 1, 2 and 3. Genetic conditions predisposing to aortic dissection. Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, Turner syndrome. Post-cardiac surgery aortic dissection. Commonest cause of post-cardiac surgery aortic dissection is after aortic wall replacement. Echocardiogram in aortic dissection. Aortic dissection is diagnosed by visualizing the flap in more than one view with independent motion and different color flows in true and false lumens. Transthoracic echo may miss one third of aortic dissections while transesophageal echo can detect almost all cases. Distal ascending aorta and part of the proximal aortic arch may not be visualized well on transesophageal echo due to the intervening air passages. Acute aortic syndromes Aortic dissection, penetrating aortic ulcer and intramural hematoma. All these conditions cause acute chest pain of a similar nature. Aortic regurgitation is the second most common cause of death in acute aortic dissection. Most common cause being aortic rupture. It may occur in up to 3 fourth of cases of Stanford type A aortic dissection. There are several mechanisms for aortic regurgitation in aortic dissection. 1. Dilatation of aortic root and annulus. 2. Tearing of aortic annulus or cups of the aortic wall. 3. Displacement of aortic cusps in relation to each other, interfering with closure. 4. Loss of support for aortic cusps. 5. Indimal flap interfering with closure of aortic cusps. Those with severe aortic regurgitation secondary to acute aortic dissection present with acute left ventricular failure and cardiogenic shock. Pericardial tamponade may also be associated if the dissection ruptures into the pericardial sac. In one study, there were 16 with intrinsically normal leaflets with aortic regurgitation due to correctable lesions. Incomplete leaflet closure due to aortic leaflet tethering in a dilated aortic root in 7. Prolapse of leaflet due to disrupted attachment in 8. And prolapse of dissection flap through the aortic valve orifice in 5. These defects were identified preoperatively by transesophageal echocardiography. Of this 16, Successful aortic wall repair were achieved in 15, while one needed aortic replacement after a complicated intraoperative course unrelated to the aortic wall. Here is an important journal reference. The characteristic feature of D-dimer elevation in aortic dissection is that levels are very high immediately after the dissection while in most of the disorders associated with D-dimer elevation, the levels rise gradually. Hence, the highest diagnostic yield of D-dimer estimation in suspected aortic dissection is in the first hour. It may be noted that D-dimer may be negative in intramural hematoma and penetrating atherosclerotic ulcer 
to other important acute aortic syndromes. Around one third of cases of aortic dissection may be missed on initial evaluation and hence D-dimer estimation may give a clue to the need for imaging studies. After evaluation of 227 cases with suspected aortic dissection, of which 87 were confirmed, Suzuki and associates concluded that D-dimer may be useful in risk stratification if done within 24 hours of onset of symptoms. A meta-analysis showed that sensitivity and negative predictive value was high though the specificity and positive predictive values were low. They concluded that a D-dimer value below 500 nanograms per ml would identify subjects unlikely to benefit from aortic imaging. Advised study was a prospective multi-center study of acute aortic syndromes. The value of D-dimer estimation along with aortic dissection detection score was evaluated. The study concluded that the combination of aortic dissection detection risk score and D-dimer estimation may be considered to standardize diagnostic rollout of acute aortic syndrome. Elevated D-dimer levels at admission was found to be associated with 90-day postoperative adverse events in patients with type A dissection undergoing aortic arts replacement. This was a retrospective analysis of 347 patients. First set of references on D-dimer in aortic dissection. Second set of references on D-dimer in aortic dissection. Discussion on management of aortic dissection. Aortic dissection is the most common aortic emergency. It is one of the three acute aortic syndromes the other being aortic intramural hematoma and penetrating aortic ulcer. It has a grave prognosis with 20% pre-hospital and 30% in-hospital mortality. Aortic dissection is generally considered as acute when the diagnosis is made within 14 days of onset and chronic after that. An intimal and medial tear in the aorta causes blood to seep into the media and the false lumen usually progresses along a variable extent of the aorta. Important risk factors for aortic dissection are hypertension, Marfan syndrome, and bicuspid aortic valve. Management of aortic dissection is according to its anatomical extent and duration. Pain is the most common presenting symptom which initiates imaging studies. Computed tomography is the first line investigation in suspected aortic dissection. Other modalities are transesophageal echocardiography and magnetic resonance imaging. Early diagnosis and management is the key to improving outcome in aortic dissection. Surgical repair if feasible is considered in proximal dissections. Distal dissections call for endovascular repair in the presence of malperfusion or imminent rupture. Uncomplicated distal dissections may be managed medically. Severe pain in the chest or back with migration down as dissection progresses is classical of aortic dissection. History of recent strenuous exercise or use of drugs like cocaine or amphetamines may be there. Neurological symptoms like loss of consciousness, paraparesis or paraplegia may occur. New onset aortic regurgitation pericardial effusion and myocardial ischemia may occur with proximal dissection. Even though aortic dissection is classically divided into acute and chronic based on duration, another classification by Buha and Associates divides it into four time domains based on data from International Registry of Aortic Dissection. From symptom onset to 24 hours, it was named hyperacute acute between 2 to 7 days, subacute between 8 to 30 days, and chronic if it is more than 30 days. Traditional anatomical classifications are DBK classification and Stanford classification. In DBK category 1, dissection tear in ascending aorta propagates distally to include at least the aortic arch and typically the descending aorta. 
The Bakey category 2 is dissection only in the ascending aorta. Category 3 is dissection tear in the descending aorta, propagating most often distally. It is subdivided into category 3A in which it is confined to descending thoracic aorta and 3B in which the tear extends below the diaphragm. In Stanford classification, all dissections involving the ascending aorta are type A irrespective of the site of tear. All dissections that do not involve the ascending aorta are classified as Stanford type B. Pen ABC and dissect are other classification systems. Though several biomarkers have been evaluated in aortic dissection, only D-dimer is considered clinically feasible. It is markedly elevated in aortic dissection. Cutoff value of 500 nanograms per ml can be used to rule out aortic dissection with a negative likelihood ratio of 0.07 within the first 24 hours. In a study of 113 cases, it was found that those with younger age, thrombosed false lumen without ulcer-like projections and shorter dissection lengths were likely to have false negative D-dimer values. Initial management of acute aortic dissection is to control blood pressure and reduce DP by DT which is linked to the ventricular ejectile force to reduce propagation of dissection. Blood pressure is reduced to the levels just enough for end organ perfusion. Intravenous beta blocker is the most important medical management for reducing DP by DT. Labetalol which blocks both alpha and beta receptors lowers blood pressure and DP by DT. Use of vasodilators without beta blockade should be avoided as they increase DP by DT. Sedation with opiates will be useful in reducing the sympathetic discharge and catecholamine levels. Mortality of type A dissection has been reported as 26% in those managed surgically and 58% in those not receiving surgery typically because of advanced age and comorbidity. Type B dissection had mortality of 10.7% on medical management. In those 20% of type B dissection patients who underwent surgery, mortality was 31.4%. Prompt surgical treatment aims to remove the entry into the false lumen and reconstitute the true lumen with a synthetic graft with or without reimplantation of coronary arteries. Resuspension of native aortic wall is preferred to replacement for associated aortic regurgitation. Endovascular repair is considered for descending thoracic aortic dissection. Open surgical repair requires single lung ventilation, left heart bypass, profound hypothermia, and cerebrospinal fluid drainage. Hence, endovascular repair has a class 1 indication in type B dissection. For type A dissection, though endovascular repair is technically feasible in some cases, surgical repair is the standard option. In type B dissection, if malperfusion of a branch persists, then branch vessel stenting or petticoat technique with open bare metal stents can be used. First set of journal references. Second set of journal references. Third set of journal references. Fourth set of journal references. Discussion on aortic stent grafting or endovascular aortic repair. Aortic stent grafting is becoming increasingly common for treatment of thoracic and abdominal aortic disease. Aortic aneurysms can be excluded by stent grafts, avoiding a major cardiothoracic surgery with obvious advantages in those with multiple comorbidities, often having prohibitive surgical risk. Aortic stent graft delivery system is quite long and thick, requiring a femoral artery cut down for introduction. If the diameter of the femoral arteries are small, it may need an external iliac artery exposure. The proximal end of the device has a mechanism for releasing the stent after accurate positioning. 
There is also a side port for flushing the stent region. Stent graft is mounted at the distal end of the device. Guide wire port can also be seen at the proximal end. Iotic stent graft with delivery system, full length view. This fluoroscopic image shows the aortic stent graft positioned in the arch and descending thoracic aorta ready for deployment. The saccular aortic aneurysm is also visible in the background. While positioning the device, shortening during expansion should also be taken into consideration. Comparison charts of the shortening during expansion for each stent diameter is available along with stent graft as a product insert. If this important aspect is not taken into consideration, the stent graft may not cover the lesion completely, leading to endo-leak. In this image, we see the stent graft soon after delivery, but before the removal of the guide wire and the delivery system, part of which can be seen beyond the stent graft in the ascending thoracic iota. Though initially developed for the management of aortic aneurysm, stent grafting has been applied for aortic dissections as well. The INSTED trial, a randomized comparison of strategies for type B dissection, found that TVAR failed to improve two-year survival and adverse event rates in spite of favorable aortic remodeling. Though the initial report was negative, the two to five-year result was heartening. TVAR was associated with improved 5-year aorta-specific survival and delayed disease progression. Stent graft-induced false lumen thrombosis was noted in 90.6% of cases. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video. Kindly press the bell icon after that for getting all updates.